on the stage. I will call Anton. Hello, Anton. And he will Hi. talk about achieving flow in a bakery with high demand va variability. G Hello, Chris. And uh, thanks very much Hello. for um, uh, uh, making this time available for the presentation by Espresso. Um, so my job right now is simply to uh, introduce Martin and Rory from Espresso Bakery, um, who will take us through uh, the story of their uh, implementation. So Martin, uh, together with his wife Stavi, are the co-owners and managers of Espresso Bakery. Um, and uh, Rory is the continuous improvement manager. Uh, so Martin and Rory, um, over to you so that you have enough time to uh, share your experience. Uh, thank you, Anton. Thank you. And um, hello, everyone. Um, and thank you for joining uh, our session today. We're looking forward to uh, sharing our experiences uh, in implementing lean management in our business. Um, my name is Martin Zaradnik. I'm the Managing Director at uh, Espresso Bakery in Cape Town. Um, with me today, um, I've got Rory O'Connor. He's our um, Continuous Improvement Facilitator. Um, we're a manufacturer um, and wholesale supplier of baked goods to the food service and hospitality industries in Cape Town. Um, and what that means is that Hundreds of businesses uh, of all um, sizes de depend on us um, every day locally within within the Cape Town region to to deliver fresh products to them every um, every day on time. Um, we're a, I'm just going to we're a family business. Um, we've been in operation for uh, 24 years now. Um, We, um, my wife Stevie and I uh, took over from her father when, uh, uh, after the COVID lockdown ended, um, and we started working with the Lean Institute um, to transform our operation. Um, to give you some background on, on, on what our operation looks like, um, our daily production cycle starts with our day shift, uh, producing stock to a forecast. Uh, then we have a cutoff time at, uh, for orders at 4 p.m., where after our night shift makes to order, and we pick orders throughout the night to be ready for our trucks to depart at 3.30 the next morning. Um, so you can see from, from the graph that our, our demand patterns are highly variable. Um, they always have been and they continue to be. Um, you can see peaks um, over the weekends and public holidays, um, we, we, do, we don't actually deliver on Sundays, but we have uh, one, or, one or two customers that we make a special arrangement for. Um, and in this graph, you can see a public holiday. Um, this is September of this year, the recent, recent graph, um, when we, we, we had a record of nearly double our average uh, daily output. Um, so, so that that was a that was a very long day for for our team, but I'm happy to say that it went fairly well, thanks to a lot of the um, the systems and the flow that we've managed to introduce over the last 18 months. Um, there were a number of reasons why we decided to to use lean management um, in transforming our business. Um, we had we had serious capacity constraints. Um, we we had very little control over our operation, um, endless firefighting. Um, but we also found it very difficult to to make changes um, and improvements because nothing would stick. Um, everything we did would just revert back to its old old ways. Um, and most of all, we actually we saw the the transition of ownership um, from the previous generation to us um, and the recovery after COVID as, uh, as an opportunity, as a real opportunity to, um, to make some, some big radical change in the business. And so, and so we started. There were, um, there were a number of milestones. 
um, starting in about February uh, of last year. Um, lockdown ended. Uh, we had we had a couple of terrible days where we literally ran 24 hours over over schedule, um, and we started talking talking about uh, doing lean um, and experimenting with some of the principles. Um, gradually, we um, we uh, we started introducing laying the foundations, the backbone of our daily management system. Um, we introduced a few performance measurements. Um, we also identified our first true north um, kind of idea. The, the biggest pain point we had was, uh, was late uh, truck departures. So, so we, um, we started an improvement project on that, prioritizing production to allow, allow us to do that. And gradually we started learning more. Um, it was... It was difficult. It was um, it was overwhelming because of the number of problems that were coming to the surface. Um, we we felt like we were fighting against a tidal wave of uh, of problems, but gradually, slowly but surely, um, it was getting busier throughout the year. Um, we um, we employed a full time uh, CI continuous improvement facilitator. Um, our daily management system started getting taking root. And things started settling down. Um, the atmosphere in the factory became calmer, um, more relaxed. People were more engaged, um, and and we were getting busier and busier all the time. So, just to reflect on some of the early the early steps we took, um, the one of the first things we did with um, the, the that's you, Anton. Um, late at night one night doing some work observation on the um, on the shift just trying to figure out what was actually going on in this factory um, it was a very highly complex operation um, a lot of variation not just in demand but in but in the products and the the, the processes um, we we also we we drew up a value stream map of a, of a high volume product which also revealed a lot of a lot of lessons um, here you can see a graph of our of our um, first route priority production. This was in this was still in October last year, but you can see it was it was all red, a lot of red, and that a lot of that has changed uh, now. We also um, this year we we recently revised our True North strategy to to make it more reflective of what our customers are looking for and what our staff are looking for. Um, we identified goals um, and targets um, that are measurable and displayed everywhere. Um, everyone, everyone now knows and understands why they do the things that they do in the daily management system. Everyone can connect their, their, their work and the improvement work that they do to our, our True North um, ideas, our strategy. Um, at this point, I'd... I just want to go a little bit uh, deeper into the, the daily management system, um, specifically the uh, the double loop PDCA cycle that we we use as the as the logic behind um, our DMS. Um, most people think about uh, the PDCA cycles as um, as a as a tool or a method applied to um, improvement work, but we actually use it for normal work for everyday everyday operations. Um, and it works. It works like this. We we have tools such as five five S workplace organization standardized work. Those 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 kind of standards form the the plan that we um, that we use for our normal everyday work. Um, we we have visual performance measurements also again in everyday normal work that that help us to uh, to check whether um, processes are running according to to the standards that we've set and then we have daily teamwork stand up meetings um to to reflect on all of these things and um and decide what course of action to take um if everything goes well and the work meets the meets the required standard um then the cycle continues and we and we plan to check act um, according to that, on a on a normal daily basis, if something doesn't go well and and uh, we're finding uh, a deviation from the standard, we will then move into an improvement PDCA cycle, which is more along the lines of the traditional PDCA. 
That involves um, A3s, uh, which will essentially form the plan for the experiments we're going to make, um, improvement carters, uh, coaching uh, to, uh, to reflect on, 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 on what has happened and the, the outcomes of the A3, um, and, then, and then again decisions on, on, on what, what comes next. Um, the targets that we set according to, um, according to our A3s and carters get measured against uh, the, the outcomes, and if they, if, they don't, if they don't get met, the cycle continues. If they do get met, um, we move we, we, that, that target and that plan then becomes the standardized work for, uh, for the normal, normal work. So that's the WPDCA in a nutshell. Um, and I'm going to hand over to Rory now, who's going to tell you a little bit more about some of the projects that we've, that we've been involved in. Hello, I'm Rory, and uh, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about the five practices in the um, DMS system. Um, as you can see, our scaling area was in dire need of some 5S, and um, it was a bit of a dumping ground. Um, for, for various items, nobody knew where they belonged. Um, but to make the labels and to designate the spaces, it was quite easy. Uh, but, but basically to, to uh, keep the, everything in the, their desig designated space was, was quite tricky, uh, certainly at first. Uh, as you can see, we have improved, uh, we have come quite a long way. Uh, we got a new shelf in that uh, allowed us to basically move more ingredients much closer to the workstation, uh, which helped us um, immensely and um, uh, made, made my, my people wait uh, shorter times. Uh, as you can see, there's a board on the right-hand side, uh, which is our Kanban board, uh, which also helped um, clear up the understanding of the priority uh, which production needed their ingredients in. Um, and it did take quite a lot of pressure off the scaling staff. Um, that's me holding the uh, end of shift checklist, which uh, uh, went a long way in helping the uh, two shifts, the day and night shift, communicate with each other because um, the day and night shift don't actually ever see each other. So it was hard to actually get them both on the same page. Um, we have... Uh, written quite a few SOPs, uh, mostly for our core processes, and um, it was slow to get off the ground. Um, but we, we also realized that um, once we had the, the SOPs locked down, uh, a lot of them actually revealed how um, a lot of the staff, uh, or, or how some of the staff did the same task in different ways. Um, so uh, it was quite revealing after the fact. Uh, we've still got a some way to go with SOPs. Um, our experience with visual performance measurement was, was uh, quite interesting in that um, we, we realized that it, you know, the, the visual performance measurement has quite a lot of power to motivate uh, and change behavior. Um, it seems now that everyone in the bakery can't stand red. Um, they kind of see it as a as a failure or a criticism, uh, which which is you know obviously not the case. You know, red is off target and green is on target. Um, but um, the the visual performance measurement um, uh, took a while to get going, and it took a while to train people to actually um, fill in the graphs properly and and understand um, what kind of uh, impact that they were having on the teams. Uh, our daily team meetings uh, also um, kind of followed a, a similar pattern with, with all the five practices, and that is that um, they got going for about uh, two months um, and then pretty much uh, petered out. And um, uh, it kind of taught us that um, these things are, are not, not kind of um, uh, not easy to sustain, right? Um, 
So here's, um, here's the office meeting, here's a driver's meeting. Um, our DMS scoring system, uh, when done by the managers, uh, really, really revealed to us uh, the opportunities for improvement, uh, which was really useful. Um, and um, relating this DMS practices score to the WPDCA um, has been has uh, been slow going, but um, quite quite a lot of the staff actually understand um, how they fit together, um, and it's been um, quite interesting to get their feedback on that. Uh, this is our supermarkets uh, uh, resupply uh, shelf for the for for production. Uh, which has really created um, quite a lot more flow in the system and allowed, um, uh, well, it's, it's basically um, uh, stopped the um, production staff from entering the scaling area uh, and it's um, made people wait shorter times for the, for the ingredients. Um, so we've also had some success with... Um, with uh, reducing the number of um, pre-made mixes, um, we, we experienced quite a lot of um, resistance uh, initially, um, but uh, the beh behavior has changed quite a bit. Um, and the standards of the shelf also took quite a while to um, be, uh, uh, you know, to be practiced correctly. Um, but we have had some great success in um, reducing the number of pre-made mixes. These are our muffins. Uh, we used to have 32 buckets of muffin, muffins on the shelf waiting for ages. Now we've reduced that to seven, so that's been quite an improvement. So I'm gonna hand back to Martin now, um, and he's gonna tell you more about um, uh, the, the follow-up and, and uh, current situation. Okay. Thank you, Rory. Um, okay, so the the point we've managed to come to after after a year and a half of uh, of lean implementation, um, we did the exercise of collecting the data and, and and plotting it over here. And as you can see, it 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 really has allowed us um, to improve our productivity quite quite substantially. Um, the, the top line is our, our units produced per employee, our overtime. It hasn't come down uh, dramatically, but it's definitely on the right, uh, on the right trend. So the numbers are, are, are going in the right direction. Um, we're also very excited uh, this week to be shutting down one of our fridges, and um, we're probably going to remove it, actually, to make more space for, for production areas, because we don't need it anymore. That's what it looks like now. We've re reduced the amount of uh, inventory um, to the point where we can actually shut that fridge down. Um, another, another very pleasing um, uh, development has been the reduction in uh, customer complaints. We started tracking customer complaints. Um, we started um, directly involving um, our teams uh, in improvement projects to, to address those, those complaints. And as you can see, the graph moving from left to right becomes progressively more and more green and on target. And we've actually, so since then, we've reduced the target um, by a percent or two um, to, to a much uh, better level. So that's all happened while still getting busier and busier and busier. Um, it, hasn't, it hasn't been an easy ride. Um, it has been, have been a lot of uh, headwinds along the way. Um, our culture was a very difficult thing. Still is a difficult uh, uh, challenge, but um, it very difficult to um, change a culture um, that is so entrenched. Um, the lack of the lack of communication, the lack of understanding, um, the the um, the chaos of firefighting, all of that really um, really stood in our way. Um, but eventually, we we feel like we're getting somewhere. Um, it does require patience. Um, but we have really learned to have respect for people um, and to, you know, if anything needs to be tackled, it's the processes, not the people. Um, we are massive uh, followers of measurements. We believe in, 
you can't solve anything unless you measure it. Um, making it visual is is certainly a lot uh, uh, a lot better than uh, than talking about it. Um, all of these things have 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 really um, uh, taught us a lot of a lot of valuable lessons along the way, which we we plan to use for many years to come. So that's our story, and thank you, thank you for uh, for listening. We look forward to your questions and answers. Great, uh, Martin and Rory, thank you very much. Um, you certainly given us a, 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 a good product to chew on <laughs> for, the, <laughs> for the, the way in which you shared, the, the way in which you implemented. So, um, so we, um, we have a, a question in, uh, in the chat. Um, the, uh, there's Marta who, who um, makes the, I'm not sure if it's a question or, or a comment. Well, isn't PDCA already an infinite loop? Um, and Marta, well, I can certainly agree with you. Um, uh, the, the WPDCA is certainly not a closed loop. Um, continuous improvement definitely has to, has to keep on happening. Um, uh, and then uh, Sylvia asks um, in detail, how did you fight the ma uh, the, and manage the very variable daily demand? Um, so, uh, Martin, I think I'm going to ask you to uh, yeah. share a bit more about that ongoing battle. Well, um, the, yeah, the truth is that uh, it's not something we can f fight back with. There's nothing we can do to change our, our, our demand patterns. Our customers uh, require, require things when they require things, and those are the peaks of um, uh, seasonal demands and weekly demands. So, we... We respond to it to, um, to try to um, introduce as much flow as possible so that that demand um, hits us earlier, sooner rather than later. And, and, and by that I mean um, even, the, even the, daily, um, the daily cycle that we have is effectively just one big batch of production. Um, when, we, um, when we do all our invoicing and all our, um, our, our, our order sheets are route delivery sheets everything everything gets put together in one in one queue and everything gets sort of done in 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 one batch at the moment so 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 that's still a big obstacle we're wanting to um we're wanting to to change that to allow orders to be packed continuously uh for things to be produced continuously so that we don't um we don't rely so much on forecasting uh to uh to manage our production we um, uh, we want to introduce more um, Kanban systems in um, in production, so that um, as we're receiving the orders, we can we can start uh, dealing with them and um, um, even pa start packing trucks the night before. So we've got a lot of plans um, um, ahead on how we're going to uh, to manage that, but it does remain um, an everyday challenge. Thank you, Martin. Um, so I think I'm going to go to the question by Nisimi Kok, um, uh, and uh, that uh, is uh, the question: Is has this application also been lean as well as digitalization? And I think uh, this question touches on a bit of a, a painful uh, uh, point. Uh, so, Martin, maybe. You can share a little bit about um, how the product we, we're working on the production schedule uh, to um, to understand uh, uh, how to produce what is actually necessary according to the daily yeah. orders. Yes, so um, digitalization has always been sort of in the always known that it was something we were going to have to uh, to do and tackle right from the beginning. Um, you know, as a as a bakery, as a food food manufacturer, um, computer systems are, are are often the last thing you 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 think about. You you get them only because you absolutely have to have them um, for uh, for invoicing and things like that. But nobody really knows how to use them or how to implement them. Um, but we we did make a decision to um, to implement a new ERP system. Um, it was. 
it has not been easy. It has been, you know, there have been a lot of uh, hard lessons learned over there. Um, but at the end of the day, after after having been through this whole um, lean transformation process so far, we found that the best the best solution to to digitalization has been. Um, first of all, understanding exactly what it is that you need the machine to do for you, um, which is not always obvious, um, and then um, uh, get it developed because finding things off the shelf um, has has just not worked for us. Our our, our operation is is too is too unique. It's too different. It's too variable for. For off-the-shelf systems to um, to really work, so so we're looking at a number of um, uh, low-code sort of integrations and automations that can that can help us reduce the workload on our people um, and improve uh, information flow to to our production. Um, well, Martin, if I if I can add. Um I think there's something really important about uh, the comment you made about low code, um, because um, with these uh, uh, more standard off the shelf um, products, um, it's actually a barrier to improvement and innovation. Um, whereas, um, for instance, the way that you're experimenting at the moment with a, just a spreadsheet to see whether we can accurately determine how much dough needs to be made and therefore set a standard that we can then see what has actually happening in the on the shop floor against that standard and in that way learn and close the gap so yeah. i think it's 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 an exciting time uh, because it's now becoming possible for, for ordinary people like us to um, learn how to conquer these uh, digital systems. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a question of, um, I think, as you, as you say, really deeply understanding what your needs are. Um, it's, 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 some, it's been a big lesson to me. Uh, it's been quite humbling to... To actually, in the in 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 the making of a simple spreadsheet like that calculates all our uh, our, our dough requirements, um, to to understand how how complex that calculation can be, it's something that you think is very simple that any system should be able to do, but until you actually need to do it, it's it's a different story. Great. Um, well, um, we've time for the one last question from Natalia. Um, the question is, how did you arrange a time without a pick day uh, when we didn't have many, when you didn't have many orders? Um, so I'm, I must admit, I'm not entirely clear what the question is about. Uh, um, are, are you able to um, respond um, to that, Martin? Well, um Delivery time without a pick day. Well, well, we, well maybe, we pick every day except for except for Saturday nights. Um, you know, picking is uh, is absolutely part of our process. Um, and uh, and yeah. maybe just to add that that you know the, the even the the schedule work times of people are adjusted to fit in with the daily demand cycle. Um, yes. And so. All right, so I think let's let's end it there. Um, Martin and Rory, you got many thumbs up and clapping hands. Um, people appreciate your uh, presentation. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. And over to Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anton. Thank you, Martin, Rory.